and sister Shauna here from love in the pot so I'm welcoming you to my backyard garden and we're gonna see what we can harvest out here today to use in the kitchen so I'm out here in my long sleeves my tights my clogs and all that good stuff <laughs> Right now, I only have one red one to harvest. I messed around and let this thing get too heavy. It's leaning to the side, so when it when those turn red, I prune it. So I'm gonna take this guy. I had to do a big purge on my um, Mint Valley because some army worms were all in there. Look, guys, um, this big old thing here is a butternut squash with whole plant. And it's giving me some nice butternut squash. So when those are ready, they'll be featured on Love in the Pot. I'll show you some things we can do with those. So in the meantime, let's see. We can harvest some Swiss chard. And some of the things look all wilty and dehydrated, but it's because it's the high heat of the day. I should have done this earlier. So... I have a nice bounty of rainbow chard. Um, and when you're harvesting, you can keep getting more yield from the leaves as long as the weather is not too cold. Although these will do well in cool temperatures too. But you want to cut very low to the base to harvest the leaves. And once they get at least four inches, four to six inches long, they're ready for harvest. I am going to work at harvesting these leaves, y'all. And it's bruised from scrubbing against that stick, so I'll just take that part off. And all kind of red cayenne peppers. Oh no, maybe it's a piece. I don't know. These are cow no, these are cow these are hot cayenne peppers. Mm. I have too many of these. I have a bag full right now. And I have to make some hot sauce or something. Okay. When you water peppers, you want to water low to the ground because the pepper babies mm. fall off so easy. Um, so you definitely don't want to water from the top. Okay. So this way. These are red bell peppers. So I'm gonna let them turn red. I have a broken baby bok choy from walking by. So I'm gonna use go ahead and carve it with the chart. Oh man, I have a lot of jalapenos. Yes, I can take a couple. Mm. I really don't need all this peppers right now. Ooh, I can have, I can do some stuff. Um, jalapeno poppers. Okay, two is good for the moment. Is that seed? Oh my goodness, is that egg? What is that? Oh my goodness. What the heck is oh. that? It's a hornworm. It's huge. It? Those are wasp eggs. Yes. See, this is why wasps are so good. Because they will lay their eggs on the big hornworms. And the babies will hatch and eat the hornworm inside out. Well, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Everyone, this, this monstrosity of a thing is what's eating your tomatoes. It's called a tomato hornworm. And it's got wasp babies all up on it and everything. What do the wasp babies do? They, um, after the eggs hatch, they eat the, um, inside out. So it doesn't even have a chance to, um, one like, it will get big, but then it'll die. We're gonna kill them all. But, hold on. <laughs> this is it right here. This ugly thing is a tomato. Wait for the camera to clear out. 
Let me go back. Yeah, there we go. Scoot in a little bit more. Right here, fellas. Disgusting! Ugly abomination of a garden. Just wanted to share that with you. And welcome to the executioner. peppers we got our tomato we picked our rainbow swiss chart now i'm gonna pick some herbs i had dinosaur kale here but those bad army worms ate most of it out so i had to give it a clean herb this one i just killed it cut them in there. another bad critter that's an army worm with a piece of mulch they come in different colors and varieties. They're terrible. They will eat out your garden real fast. Kill them, squish them, whatever you need to do. Alrighty, so don't mind the leaves of those. Those are beets. I will juice the leaves, but you know, if they survive, but really I'm after the bulb. So anyway, we're gonna harvest some of these herbs. One important thing when you're gardening, if you don't harvest, um, you will stunt the growth of the you will stunt the growth of the plant. So I have some fresh thyme. Get some of that. It's gotten quite good. Mm. Cut it at the base. What you're supposed to do to cut the basil is cut in between the joints, like where it makes a V. You're to cut the center, where it makes a V, you cut the center um, part of the plant all around, not just at the top, so it'll get some coolness and it'll grow more shoots. So it should kind of be like that. But I'm usually more aggressive with these because it's very dense. What I think I'm going to make is some sort of Mediterranean grain bowl. Not only is it healthy, but it's very filling and it will uh, be great to feature the ingredients I have here. It looks a little bit dehydrated and it's really hot today. So hopefully it'll bounce back. And I haven't harvested from it in a while. Enough from there. Mm. All right, the last thing for today, I'm going to grab some fresh rosemary. And I did finally manage to get my blueberries. Blueberry bushes, hopefully they 
bounce back. Um, they were yellowing, which was a sign that they were becoming a rebound. So hopefully they'll bounce back. They still look to be alive. So we'll see what happens. Um, but here we are today. So far, we've harvested some peppers, lots of fresh herbs, a tomato, as well as a big old box of Swiss chard. And I'll show you that in a minute. Okay. Ooh, wow. All right, here is our harvest of Swiss chard, which was a pretty good harvest today. Doesn't even have any of the um, dinosaur kale in it, and it's a pretty good yield. This will probably give me two servings um, or 14 portions for my household size. So I will see you later in the kitchen. I'm going to get cleaned up. As you can see, it's hot out here. Um, so I will freshen up. I'll meet you back in the kitchen later.